Well, that's it for Monday press conferences with Chad Morris, Joe Craddock, John Chavis. One of the hot topics, obviously, was Jonathan Nance deciding to take the graduate transfer route. Jonathan Nance has chosen to step back from football here at the University of Arkansas. We want to wish him the best of luck. This is kind of a byproduct of the rule that was created for freshmen to be able to play four games and red shirt. I wonder if the NCAA will look at this though in the future and put some kind of restriction on players parlaying that rule with the graduate transfer rule. Maybe you can't use this coupon with any other offer. I get it, you know, it's, it's a good, hey, penny on heads. That's gotta be a good sign, right? <laughs> to be honest with you, I think it kind of violates the spirit of the rule. I get the player rights thing of it. He's a senior, he's graduated. Yeah, he should be able to do what he wants to do as a player. But at the same time, it feels a little bit like quitting on your team. And I wish Jonathan the best because this is the avenue that's been created by the NCAA, but is it quitting on your team? Is the door locked every single time I try to go through there? Yes, it is. Just coming away from the game, not feeling so bad about a 34-3 loss. These guys continue to care. There's a lot of hurt. We're going to focus on the process, and that process is to get better every day. Got a very tough opponent this week. Given the newness and the change and everything that's going on right now, and you look across the country at the other coaches that are taking over programs that were in bad shape, and they're in their first year, Tennessee, Nebraska, Florida State, even though they won seven games last year, UCLA. It seems like the worst teams in Power 5 football right now are the teams that have new coaches taking over, over bad situations especially. So is that the case with Arkansas? Are better things on the horizon? I thought they played their best game, even though they lost by that point total. They just couldn't put the ball in the end zone. The defense absolutely played very well, and I think they've played well the last two games. So anyway, that's my thoughts on it. We'll move on into Tuesday practice. And uh, yeah, I'm just walking in a circle. It's just for, it's just for the, this video. It's just so the video looks good. Out here at Tuesday Razorback practice, I say this, they were coaching them hard on that punt team a minute ago. I mean, getting after them hard on it. And I noticed a few starters. I don't know if they were out there before, but I noticed a few starters. Playing very Texas-centric music. Texas-centric. Texas-centric, that's a new word. Coin, not to be used without express permission, permission of Hawksports.com. You know, eight's going to have some family there. Michael Woods, Texas guy. One of the few Texas players on this roster. Well, that's a wrap for the open part of Tuesday's practice. A lot of individual work, some work on some special teams, of course. We expect that to be a major part of the emphasis, obviously. Didn't see Jeremy Patton or Austin Cantrell out there. Arkansas's two top tight ends. Well, Michael Petway was in green. Did have TJ Hammonds back out there, obviously. No Jonathan Nance. What do you see when you look at the A&M defense? They're good. Uh, a lot of great athletes like normal. I mean, you always see great players with them. and They have a lot of different looks and, and bring a lot of different stuff. So we're definitely still working on getting that down. And today's a big learning day for us. So it was good to see all those looks. Well, that's a wrap for Tuesday's interviews. It's 941 and the players are obviously fed up with losing six games in a row to Texas A&M. And I don't know if they've got what it takes to beat them this year and, and change that. But Chad Morris is alma mater. John Chavis was there last year. The Rakeem Boyd factor, you know, he's going to be geeked up for this one. Well, I haven't seen him be too emotional since, since I've been around him. I, I don't know how much his emotion can change. He's pretty pretty steady in everything he does. And so I, I'm sure that there's, there's a lot of his friends are still there and there's a lot of extra incentives, but it's just like every other week. It'll be another game for him. Out here at Wednesday, Razorback practice. Well, Michael Petway's back out here in full. Randy Ramsey's back out in here in full. The two tight ends, Austin Cantrell and Jeremy Patton, are both in green jerseys still. So looks like some guys are trickling back in, and Noah Gatlin also in green. But Chad Moore saying earlier that he expects all those guys to play. It's raining. It's 60 degrees outside. It was 84 yesterday, so pretty drastic change in temperature. Unfortunately, this week, the wet ball work's not going to do them any good as they're going to be inside. So Wednesday, Razorback practice, nice and wet. And I'll say this about Barry Lunny, he's been getting after these guys like I hadn't seen before. On the special teams too. He's not happy with anybody. Not today, not this week. Hayes in the barn. Now, I'm not saying they're gonna beat Texas A&M, that's not what I'm predicting or anything, but 
I do think that they're going to build on last week. I'm not even expecting the defense to play as well as they did last week, but I think there will be some kind of middle ground. The offense taking steps forward, some improvement on special teams, and the defense still playing well is what I think is probably going to happen. And I think it's going to be an okay game. Texas a and is still going to win, but it's going to be an okay game in this one. So it's Trey Biddy signing off in Fayetteville. I'll see you guys in Arlington.